Hello, my name is Jonathan Lang, and uh, this is a talk about dashboards as code. We all love dashboards, right? I assume that's kind of why we're here. Like, we all really, really like dashboards. And Grafana is basically awesome at dashboards. It's one of the best things for building dashboards, viewing them. It's great. Um, but if you're making your dashboards and you're making them by going to the UI, which you know, to the excellent UI and clicking around uh, and using that to make your dashboards, there are a few problems with that. It can be hard to enforce consistency between your dashboards. Uh, if you've got like a common thing that you want to do on all of your dashboards, it can be hard to automate that. You'll end up doing the same clicking over and over. And if you um, want to connect like a change to your dashboards to a change to your code, perhaps you're instrumenting your code, a new instrumentation, and you want to have like a new dashboard for that, you know, there's no way to connect that in, in your history. So the solution to this is to stick everything in Git. Great. Um, this pattern of like storing a declarative data in Git and using and deploying that to your cluster is something that we at Weaveworks call GitOps, which is something that we like quite a lot. This is kind of about how to do that. Um, we a while ago started storing all of our Grafana JSON files in Git. And then we had like a custom linter that enforced some things so that we're all sorted, that all of the IDs were unique, um, a few style rules that we liked. Uh, so like zero-based y-axis for um, percentage graphs so that things are a little bit more meaningful. And this was great because we had meaningful history and we could do code reviews to check things were right. Um, the JSON, I'm, many of you will have seen this, but the JSON looks a little bit like this. There's a, it's a big file full of lots of features. And I just want to show you this example because at Weaveworks, for our internal dashboards, we don't set legend ever. But each PR and each dashboard file, you know, we have to look through this, all, all this legend stuff, and we're just quite content with the defaults. They're great. So the problems with having the JSON files in Git where the, you'd have these huge PRs, and they're very difficult to reason about because you've got all these defaults that just don't really matter, you know, they, that don't matter. And um, the process of creating dashboards and graphs was still quite manual. We'd go to the UI, do some things, export, put it in the thing. And our, our lint script grew ever more complicated as we came up with new rules, like um, 500 errors should be shown in red, and that sort of thing. So we thought, if it's so hard to check that the JSON's right, why not just generate it correctly in the first place? We wanted a tool that was, uh, a lang you know, a, I guess, a language that was as simple as possible because this is all data. Like we don't want, we don't want to be too fancy. We didn't want all of the uh, all of Grafana's really good defaults cluttering our configuration of those defaults. We wanted to be able to reuse common patterns. We wanted to be able to say this is a red method row and you know just kind of encode that. And we wanted an approachable syntax, something that, uh, so there wasn't just one dashboard person, but like everyone in the company could um, make changes. So what we made is something called Grafana Lib, um, which you can clone there. Grafana Lib is a Python embedded domain specific language for making Grafana dashboards. Uh, we released it in December 2016. It's got 21 contributors. I think about 15 of those are from outside Weaveworks, and it's got a lot of stars on GitHub by my standards. So how does it work? It's a command line tool called generate dashboard. You give it a file that's called something.dashboard.py, and it outputs a dashboard.json. This is what a dashboard definition looks like. Um, you define a top-level dashboard variable, and then you just say, here's my title. Here are my rows. And then you see here that what we've done is we've got like a special custom function that we use internally for defining what a scope row looks like. So let's take a look at that. A scope row takes a name and a job and returns a row. It has a QPS graph and a latency graph. Uh, if you saw Tom's talk yesterday, this is standard sort of red method graphs. And we really like these. QPS graph, just drilling in a little bit more, takes, um, builds a Prometheus expression, builds, in fact, five Prometheus expressions, one for each kind of HTTP response code and then returns a graph, which is stacked, like you see the stacked function there, which is our local style-specific stacking, because we like zero line width and things for stacked graphs, so like we kind of make that really nice and easy. 
If you want to use this, uh, the way we use it uh, is we use a make file to turn the dashboard Python files into JSON files. Then we use a Docker file to combine all the JSON files with the base Grafana image. And then in your continuous integration, you can push the Docker image to your registry. And then you can use a continuous deployment tool like Weave Cloud. Check out cloud.weave.works to deploy Grafana to your cluster. Um, Grafana 5, this is a completely different story with Grafana 5. So um, I encourage you to figure it out and maybe send me a, a documentation patch. Actually using Grafana Live in real life has been a lot of fun. Um, we don't have dash dashboard specialists. It's like any of our developer team can just add a new dashboard. It's a few lines of Python, uh, and it you know, complies with all of our standards. It's great. Reviewing changes is, is wonderful, because we don't, um, it's, it's all meaningful stuff. Um, and as you can see, we could automate our common patterns, because it's just functions. The other thing is that because all of our dashboards are super consistent, it makes being on call a lot easier because there's less cognitive overhead translating what, uh, you know, like you can look at something and, and you just know what it means automatically. The future for Grafana Lib, um, someone has very kindly submitted a huge PR for migrating JSON files into the Python files. Um, so I'm in the process of reviewing that and getting that into shape. And that'll make it much easier to get started. Um, we want to have better support for Grafana 5. Um, to take advantage of the new features. And uh, kind of we just started talking to some other people who um, make dashboards. I should point out that like, dashboards as code is not an original idea from us. Um, and we're certainly not the only game in town. Like, there's a lot of other really good things uh, out there you can try or stay tuned for a later talk. Um, but we're kind of talking about how we can interact with them in a way that kind of gets us all moving forward. So you're going to take things away. GitOps is pretty cool. Dashboards as code really works. You can use Grafanalib. You can use Grafanalib. There's a bunch of options there. And you should try Grafanalib. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we have a moment for questions, if, if anyone has any. So you say version 5 support is a work in progress. Where are things at at the moment, and how sort of soon before it's done? So um, if you're running Grafana 5, you can use all of the features of Grafana 4 today. <laughs> um, we don't have any, uh, and we don't have any support for the new features of Grafana 5, like the new grid layouts or anything like that. Um, PRs are most welcome. We're pretty prompt in reviewing them. Um, in terms of uh, the deployment stuff uh, with the, the, the new provisioning for dashboards, um, I, th I think it will just work. I haven't tried it. So um, probably. Anyone else have a question for Jonathan? Nope. Thank you very much. Thank you.